Hello and welcome to my channel Liz Redesigns where I like to share budget friendly and fun DIYs. So make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Also if you like this video please leave me a comment below where you can also find a list of the supplies that I have used in this video. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest and at LizRedesigns.com. So let's get started. So today's project was super fun to make, super easy, super cheap. As you can see, um, I am using a Dollar Tree burner cover, um, some chicken wire, some of the Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree, as well as some eggs. These eggs I got at Hobby Lobby in the 90% off um, bin. So I think I paid like mm, not even a dollar for the whole bag. And I took three out and spray painted them white. And then after I spray painted them white and they dried, I decided to take the, go this speckle look. Um, I thought that would be more realistic. And since uh, the burner covers white background, the speckles would make it pop. I cut out this design using my Cricut Maker. If you like it, you can get it for free over my Facebook group or on my website. Um, I had, it's hard to see in the video, but I did find the center mark on the pan and made a little indention with um, my pencil. And then the center line that you can see in the middle of the design, that's how I matched it up to make sure it was even because the first time I did this was not. It was very um, wonky and uneven and I had to redo it. And I found that um, I don't know if you could see or not that just doing a little bit at a time and pulling the back off kind of like you would if you were using contact paper um, is the best way to get that on there and get it even. So I started a little bit and then you, I think you can see this part. When I lift up I'm going to pull backwards. I forgot to mention that this is the 631 adhesive vinyl, so it's non-permanent. And once you get your design on, you just want to press firmly down around your design to make sure there's no openings so the paint doesn't bleed through. I always like to do my first coat very lightly as the background color. This helps prevent the bleeding of the next color that you're going to be doing. And with the chalk paint, uh, you don't have to use a whole lot at all. If you use too much, when you go to peel it, it can bring it, bring the design with it and mess up the image. Although the chalk paint dries very quickly, I like using a heat gun in between coats just to make sure that it's completely dry before, before applying my next one. Here I'm using the Waverly Black chalk paint and I end up having to do uh, two layers of this to get the desired outcome that I wanted. You'll want to make sure that the paint is completely dry before you start removing the design. And here I just slowly and very carefully start pulling up. And with this final, it comes off easily. For the smaller and more intricate areas, I have found that something with a needle point tip works perfect. Um, you'll still want to be careful as not to mess up the design or scratch the pan, but this has helped me out tremendously whenever I'm dealing with areas like this. For this next part, I am using this rope that we had left over from a previous project, and I'm just going to go around the burner cover. And I want to show you a little trick that I learned here recently with your glue gun that has been a lifesaver. So if you take just a small amount of glue and put that in, it holds it in place, and it keeps your glue stick from bouncing out whenever it's running low. So I thought I would just pass along that tip because I, it has been a game changer for me. So I just go around the outer end, um, and this rope is very thick. So if you can find the, the uh, decorative rope at your Dollar Tree, you'd probably have better luck cutting it than I did with this one.
Now that I have the wire secure enough to add the remaining rope, which is really what's going to hold it down, I just took it and went around again. And there is some hot glue showing, but I'm going to show you how I ended up hiding that as well. Now this was my first time using chicken wire in a project, so it was a little difficult. Um, a little bit more than I expected, but I really love the final outcome and wanted it part of it. So if you have any tips or tricks on how to um, incorporate this that would be easier than what I'm doing, please leave me a comment below. I would love to hear them. But I am just trying to secure it on any way that I can, um, just to hold it enough until I can get the final rope to go around, which is going to be what really secures it in place. Now that I have all the rope in place, I'm going to go back and trim the excess wire. Um, be careful doing this because you can poke yourself. And I'm just using some little wire cutters that I use for jewelry making to do that. Next, I have the excess glue that was coming out on the back side as well as the center between the two big ropes. I am using this twine that I purchased at the Dollar Tree and I went all the way around. This next part, I really wanted the, to hide the phrase from the rope. So I took a lighter and went around blowing to make sure that um, it did not catch on fire. So be very careful if you do this. Now I'm going to be adding a blue checkered bow. Um, this one I got at the Dollar, I'm sorry, Hobby Lobby, but I have seen some really cute ones at the Dollar Tree. So this was just one that I had in my stash already and thought it would go with the theme. Here I'm using some raffia that I bought at the Dollar Tree to hide the center part. I did use some floral wire. I am not the best mow baker, so I'll do it as simple as possible. Um, and this was just the way that I, I usually do them. And we are finally ready to add my favorite part. I bought some of the Spanish, um, I think it was the Spanish grass at the Dollar Tree, or the Spanish moss, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to add that down in the bottom and just tuck it in there. It does get messy, so be prepared for that. And then I'm just, I just added the eggs. Isn't that cute? I really love the outcome, and I really think my mom is going to just really love this in her kitchen. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you are a chicken lover or farmhouse lover, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell because I have five more of these coming that I am making for her kitchen, um, and I cannot wait to share the other items with you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.